We first met Ike and Noah of an evening at Clara and Bill Wainwright's in Brookline, who had adopted numerous children who were not present on this occasion. It was just the grown-ups. Myself and David, my husband, David Van Bachter, and Noah Hall Williams, the wife of Ike Williams, a most beautiful spirit, a really exceptional person. And I sensed that right off the bat. But at that time, I was eight months pregnant with Nicholas, our son, only child together. And uh, it was not the best moment for me to become great friends of Noah, or for that matter, of Clara Wainwright, both women whom I valued extremely and, and really enjoyed meeting that night. We were invited because of being somewhat well known for having founded Canto and I for having published a novel called The Translator with Holt in New York. So, and David, you know, who was a Harvard product and very scholarly and also cute teaching at Harvard at the time. And so we spent this evening together, and the evening was splendid. We got into music, and we all wound up playing instruments with pots and pans like kids. And it was a most splendid evening, but because I was about to give birth, I could never become, at that moment, the close friend of either of these two extraordinary Noah, for her spirituality and her beauty, was so remarkable, and also she was a very gifted painter. Later, we were invited up to New Hampshire when John Taylor Williams Ike, to us, had taken a sabbatical from his law firm in Boston, and they had rented a place up there in New Hampshire, you know, in the mountains, and we were invited up, and again I had a chance to, you know, appreciate this incredibly spiritual person and to look at her artwork, which was <coughs> amazing for its, for its uh, technique. And she really had a lot going for her. We spent an evening, I don't suppose I was very well at the time, because I, not long after, came down with a case of the big C, and... Uh, People aren't going to know what that means. That means cancer. And uh, already, you know, I was not in the greatest shape because we were all out there to climb the mountain, and I realized I had to stop. And I stopped, and I sat in the sun and waited for everybody else, David, and, Ike and Noah, who had climbed on ahead, and perhaps a couple of the boys, Noah's wonderful sons, <coughs> to whom she transmitted these great qualities. They were just the, <coughs> the finest children, and uh, of course they benefited from their relationship to their father as well. In any case, at this point, I'd like to hand over the center stage to my husband David, who has his own relationship to Noah and to Ike and to the boys. Dad, could you please talk about how you first met Noah and proceed I, on? I asked him? my Lawrence for a classmate, Noel Blather, who for suggestions about our advisory board. And he suggested Clara Wainwright. Clara Salt and Stall Wainwright. And Clara invited us to dinner. And at this dinner were I and Noah and Drew Hyde, who was a good friend of Ike's, and they started 
beating on these bongo drums, I mean, really hard. And, you know, and Claire brought pots and pans from the kitchen and we started beating on them with spoons and having this great... We had a splendid time. Yeah, just a back and all. It was probably one of the great evenings of our life in Cambridge. And after that, question. I could know became great friends. But as I said before, we also liked Clara and Bill Wainwright a great deal. And I was somewhat behind the eight ball being so pregnant. And so we never quite recovered from that beginning with the right Wainwright. That beginning with the Wainwright. So we always So what? Can you well, we always I wanna to talk to my dad power. now. Could you please continue? And what happened afterwards about how your relationship progressed? With well, then, then I mean, we. What's her? I became our publishing lawyer after this, which is very important. I, I would first appreciate, and I tried to tell you this before I started filming, a proper eulogy about Noah. Go into more depth, please, about Noah. Yeah. yeah. And her painting. That's enough, Mom. He, he can do it. And if he doesn't well, want to do it, then we won't do it. Noah, Noah's a great painter. She really knew how to put paint on the canvas. And uh, her father was a terrific painter. Who was her father? Jack Hall. And he's a very important architect. And I had the uh, pleasure of giving Noah a book I'd found, I think, in Paris, a book of, of, about Vuillard, the great French painter of interiors. <clears throat> I think it had a big influence on her. It opened up a whole lot of things she began to do in her own work. So, I mean, and then I had shows in Provincetown, like five years in a row at the DNA Gallery. With mm, Nick Lawrence? With Nick Lawrence's gallery, the DNA Gallery. Who, and she had shows there, too. And her father came every time with Arturo Vivante to my shows, and they made a special... I, I had my 20-foot long... Ten foot high painting. Non objective. Non objective painting there, which I'd done in California after my sister died. And shipped back to Boston. Let's and had but but put up in the studio that I rented from New York. Let, let's let's stay on Noah. All right. Please. This her father just expressly told me how much he loved mine. My work. And On Noah. Don't always bring it back to you. Finally, Noah stopped painting. She'd done enough. But she did, uh, I think she did a lot of pot, pot, pottery at the Radcliffe uh, Pottery Studio. And she bought it at one of uh, Saskia's, Davy's wife's, Saskia. One of Saskia's paint, uh, beautiful sculptures. Pots. Her ceramics, so pots. In a, in a, in a, um, in a, a fundraiser benefit, for, a for Haiti. So you're going to skip ahead all the way to that? Cause I, I'm, I'm talking about like a, this, no. you, you, you skipped well, an entire arc of friendship. But right, well, most, me... most of all, I don't want you to finish. I want you to talk about Noah. I said the word eulogy, and you've gone from, like, you know, DNA gallery to Saskia, uh, my sister-in-law. Um, this is not what we've asked for. So if you can't talk about Noah, if you forgot about her or something, I can just erase this video. Like, please talk about I, Noah. I've been aware of, of Noah's spiritual life. 
for many years. And she had a profound spiritual life because of her practice of meditation, which she did like 300 feet up the hill from our house on Amory Street in Cambridge. Coming there every morning early, like probably 7.30. I even went there when we lived on Broadway, walked down the street there. So I know the place. She had a profound spiritual life, a great life of contemplation and spiritual discipline. She also loved to take walks around Fresh Pond, which she did at a walker's pace, not only for exercise, but in keeping with her spirituality and her love of nature. Noah loved gardens and she loved wildlife and, and the birds that congregated there at Fresh Pond. So going to Fresh Pond was a very important part of her life. Of course, we had not said much about her being the mother of these wonderful boys, and that's something I should Nat, like. Jared, and, and Caleb. Nat, Jared, and Caleb. And that's something I would like you to talk about, David. Her motherhood, her yeah. relationship. And, 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 and don't boys. don't bring it all back to somehow your your paintings or some your stuff. Just stay on Noah, okay, please. Well, I mean, her love is just made manifest in these young men. Nat has devoted his life now to ornithology and the life of birds, and I have a story for him I want to tell him. I have to be back in touch with him. But about a sea eagle, white-tailed sea eagle named Victor, and his love, love, love bird, his lover, Wendy, and, and how they had new baby eagles. I saw the most beautiful documentary on them. I showed it to you. So you want to talk about the boys? Well, I mean, her love is made manifest, her, and her spirituality and these young men who whose own spirituality is really profound and extremely expansive and you know, goes to the lengths and breadth of our, our planet, where the, where the birds, like the swans are able to fly around the world. The birds navigate extraordinary distances. And that spirituality and it is not surprising that one of her sons should have preoccupied himself with ornithology, which is certainly an extension of his mother's great love of uh, gardens and flowers and nature. And because the birds are, are messengers from the spirit world. We know that. And I've had the, I've had the sense of Noah looking after me since she went to the other, to the after the life. Really caring for me and watching out for me. And I pray she, this can continue. And I can continue to communicate with her. May her soul rest in peace and be, enjoy the joys of paradise. Yes, sir.